In this video, guys, we look at being seduced by breakouts and then heartbroken. <laughs> Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. If you've been training for any period of time, you know breakouts are seriously, seriously tempting, right? The thought of being able to get on this break right when it breaks with size as it then runs on massively is seriously, seriously seductive. Okay, because you think, right, especially for day trading, you think this is gonna go quickly, all this kind of stuff. But ultimately, they very, very often can break your heart. That's why we've kind of jokingly titled it like this, because often they'll break a little bit, look great, and then reverse, and they'll mess around. So just some things uh, of the observations from my own experience with trading, uh, and probably you know the same. And give it a thumbs up if you kind of resonate with this one, guys. So especially for day trading. So you get seduced by this. And this is a video really based on, I was trading the DAX the other day and the market was coming to the lows. And I thought, you know, this is gonna break, it's gonna break. And I feel myself really wanting to take this trade, but I wanna take a step back and go through the checklist. I'm like, hey, this isn't part of the plan, right? If you wanted to be on this break, you need to be in it way earlier. And then you need to be riding it and hoping for the break or not hoping, we're hoping trading, but we are one for in the trade thinking, okay, if it breaks, that's great. It gives me extra reward on the trade, but I'm still profitable up to that point. And then you can sit through noise and it's not so pro much problematic. So as tempting as you always get that temptation, you've got to kind of overcome it. And the temptation is this, right? And then you get a breakout and it works well. And we probably, every one of us have had a breakout that's worked really, really well. It's gone quickly. Breakouts generally, they go quickly because the liquidity gets sucked out of it. Prices go in it. And if we're in the right conditions, they can move very, very quickly. And as a trader, there's nothing better, right? You take the trade straight away, bang. You get a quick move, you get quickly to your target. That's what we all kind of secretly would like. We know in the real world that doesn't happen like that, but if we can find it, we think that's great. You get right with no heat. If you get a breakout right, you don't take heat. You just go straight away. And that's what we have in our mind. Like, listen, if it, if it cracks this low, or high, low particularly, generally are much more aggressive. If it cracks this low, great, I'm gonna get a quick kind of 50, 50 ticks on this, 50 pips on this, I'm gonna have no heat, I'm gonna be in decent size, great, I can make a quick you know, five minute trade and everyone's happy. And that's what you're thinking in your mind. And then you've got to think, oh, I've got potential for big wins as well. It might, might go even further. It might just really start a real flush and I might just get a massive quick win very quickly. And that seduces us into taking it. You know, and also it could be the start of a new trend, this kind of stuff. And that seduces us into taking the deal. We I think, you know, this, this, is, God, this is really, really good. And you know, you might feel yourself very often being drawn to breakouts because of this possibility. However, in the real world, we know if we step back and we observe things and we look at the bigger picture, we get way more fakes than breaks. You know, breakouts, clean breakouts that run on are quite rare. That's why for a breakout trade, and yes, there are, I do have a breakout set up and you probably should as well. It's very, very restrictive. You know, for trading breakouts, you've got to have so many things lined up for the breakout to come, i.e. catalyst mostly, some sort of trigger, some sort of event, a nice setup in the bigger picture, all those kind of things that we talk about. A real price action gem, and then a breakout is worth looking at. But most of the time, they are just probing. We get more fakes, it probes, probes to the, it's, it's, Let's go with it to keep the downside break example. Probes to the downside, comes back up, messes around, teasing as in it will break a bit, come back, break a little bit more, come back, then pop back up with a kind of brutal, um, you know, bounce that often gets scalpers out of the deal if you're, in a, if you're a day trader. Then it'll go again, and, and it doesn't. There's no clean breaks; are very, very rare, and it can lure you into chasing. You know, you can say, okay, well. Um, I will, I'll take the breakout. So you take the breakout, it goes a few ticks in your favor, but not enough, then snaps back reasonably quickly. Then you're kind of offside. Then it kind of comes up, pings you out. So you can take a stop. Then again, it goes again. You think, oh, I knew it was gonna go. You take it again. It goes a little bit more, does the same thing, stops you out and you go again. Before you know it, you've kind of risked three bunch, lots of trades to get something. And you always feel like you're caught in trying to find this one breakout, trying to get on it. And it's almost like once you've done it twice, you can't not take it again because you think it's gonna break. And if I don't take it now, it's gonna break. And ultimately that wears you down and you end up with loss that you really didn't want. And then eventually it breaks and you think, well, I knew I should have taken it. It's just a massive, massive uh, mess with your head. So 
you've got to be cautious of that. And, you know, it's very good. Price action is very unusual at these lows because often you'll get, like I say, this breakthrough that will then pause, it'll test back up. You get very quite aggressive snapbacks up because the liquidity gets sucked out of it. So it doesn't take much for it to snap back up. Then if there's a big seller, he's stepping on the on the offer of the upside. So then it pauses. And this can, if you're, especially for day trading, could kind of cause this chop and you're in it, you don't know what's going on. And so you get seduced into it again, thinking that you're going to get the quick move, you're going to get moved with no heat. You get chopped about, and then they just cause really emotional problems in terms of you know you're chasing this, you're revenge trading it, uh, you know putting you down. You know it's, it's a very challenging environment to trade. I think breakouts. So. If you're going to trade them, be very, very strict on how you're going to trade them. But even better, trade so that you're positioned. So preempt the break. You know, that's the thing about pre-planning as well with trading, guys, is that, you know, in reality, we should have that level. Let's say we've got, you know, our key level down here on the DAX and we've seen it test. You know, we're seeing it up here. We should be saying, OK, that has got a good chance of breaking. How do I position for that to break. I don't want it to wait until it's way down, it's moved down, you know, 500 points on the low, or if we're talking, uh, you know, currency pair, 500 pips, you know, from the week or whatever it may be, and we're now on the low, and I'm pressing right late into the move, hoping for a break. It's a bit late in the day for that. You're better off saying, okay, what's my thesis? Why the importance of stepping out of the time frame and looking at the bigger picture and drawing your support resistance lines in and say, okay, well, if that breaks, then I do think we could run on. That's my hypothesis. How do I get on board that with a low risk reward trade up in this section so that when we start to roll over, I've got plenty of time, plenty of meat in the trade that I don't have to worry about it messing around down here because my, my entry point's right up here. So it can do what it likes ultimately. And then eventually it breaks. I can be far more comfortable, far more relaxed in that position. So it's just do, playing the chess game looking ahead saying, okay, well, if that breaks, then this would be a good place to enter. How do I enter it? Okay, do I wanna look at double top? Do I wanna look kind of pullback? That kind of stuff. And then picking up a trigger to get in, knowing that the ultimate thesis is that that breaks. And then you're much more in a relaxed position when it does go. And then you can get the benefit of the quick move being right and all this kind of stuff, but you haven't got the risk involved with it because you're in the trade from up here. You're not gonna get some whips out as much. You're not gonna be so aggressive. It's not gonna be so concerning whether it does or it doesn't. It would be a nice uh, you know, cherry on the cake if it does, but reality, you know, you're still in profit and it's probably not gonna turn into a, a losing trade regardless of what happens on that break. So anyway, guys, seduced by breakouts, be careful about that seduction because often you can, you know, get heartbroken if you're trying to push it and press it under the wrong conditions i think is that is the actual uh, caveat to add to that because the right conditions work very very nicely but as i said alluded to earlier we don't get the right conditions very often even though breakouts can still happen they're a bit clean they're a bit grubby and can get us caught out anyway if you like that kind of stuff thumbs up appreciate it and do appreciate your support if you're a subscriber take care guys see you in the next one bye bye